Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33, 3. And who are you? <laughs> I am Kendall Hetrick. I was when I was when I rode up anyway. <laughs> yes. You're Bob Butler, right? Yes, that, that, that's what my mother named me. Okay. Well, it's great for mothers. Everybody should have a mother. Uh, I think they do. <laughs> be working to get around it, but I don't think they've got that done yet. Nope, um, never will. Well, uh, we're doing a kind of an independent conversation, the two of us with uh, the Holy Ghost, as to uh, all of the things we've been teaching since January of 2012 regarding intimacy. And last time we made a series here to, to wind some of this down, we were talking about how the enemy uh, tries to do things to us to squelch our intimacy or get us completely off course, which uh, we know he does quite readily with a lot of people, uh, get them heading the wrong direction. And uh, we went through a lot of scriptures through those teachings and uh, backed it up with, you know, the fact that I firmly believe that the fact is that Jesus, God wants us believers to operate on this earth exactly the same way that Jesus did. Everything that we have talked about and studied and discussed over the last two years points to that. That's his ultimate goal for the believers. Now we know, looking around at the church today, and you, you, you get to minister to them this morning some truth, so you, you know that the church is not really where it needs to be at this point in his point in time to be doing exactly as Jesus did. Now if we, you say, well, what did Jesus do? <laughs> Go read the four Gospels, right? Good. And uh, see what he did. Uh, and, and we're talking only about one third of who we are. We're spirit, soul, and body, and primarily the, the intimacy that we talked about is dealing with our soulish man. We all have a soul, we have a spirit, soulish man that, that lives in this physical environment that we're in that uh, we're talking about. Where God says, okay, Jesus came here, he, he lived as a human being, he did everything human beings do, mostly a uh, few exceptions uh, that's because he was deity and and uh, he, we're supposed to be doing the same thing and it was all done in this soul realm it wasn't done in the spiritual work had already been accomplished when, it, when Jesus went to the cross and told the father he says well it's finished God dad I'm coming home and that was my paraphrase by the way <laughs> uh, Personal relationship, we, now we've heard a lot of people talk about your relationship to your Savior. Well, that you can use that terminology. I think God used the word intimacy because it's a deeper word, just relationship. Uh, everybody has relationships with somebody. But the relationships they have with somebody are probably not very intimate. They really don't. Uh, have that inner knowing of now you and I have been around together for off and on for a lot of years so I feel like I know you better than I would know other people that I, I know who they are I have a relationship with them but I really don't know them you know if you ask them a question you you probably are waiting for them to answer I can ask you a question and I got a pretty good idea of how the answer is going to come back now, sometimes you throw me a curve and it doesn't happen that way, but most of the times I got a pretty good idea of, of your thinking and my thinking because we're both listening to the Holy Ghost to begin with, and, and he's only one. <laughs> so anyhow, that should get us started into where we're going. Uh, the highlight of our personal relationship with Jesus, which we started out, which we call, uh, God calls, intimacy with your Savior. And then he said, don't forget the Godhead, uh, the Father and, and the Holy Ghost. Well, Jesus told us in the four Gospels, he says, the Holy Ghost has been with you, talking to his disciples, but he shall be in you. Well, we're into that in you stage. <laughs> he is also with us, but he's also in us. Uh, and not only just the Holy Ghost. I, I was sharing this with an, another young Christian, young because they don't know much, not young in age, but 
and Mary would know who I was talking about. Uh, I was sharing this very fact is that, that you know, God Almighty is living in you. Mm -hmm. But she just couldn't have that. She said, no, I'd, I, and she was bad mouthing herself. You know, I'd make so many mistakes and I'd do this wrong. And I, she said, I just, and I said, no, wait a minute. You're not like that. You see that way, but God doesn't see you that way. And, and so we went on and talked some more about that. And I think that's one of the problems that we see in, in Christianity today in, in this country is that we don't see ourselves the way God sees us. We see our, like you see me or I see you or Dan or Mary or, or somebody else and we started praising everything from the natural. Instead of going back to God, say, "Okay, God, how do you see me? What do you want me doing?" You know. I didn't, uh, well, I, I threw a lot of stuff out there. We need to get going on uh, on where we're going, which I don't know for sure what it is yet. But this is called the conversation. How you know if we, go, if we don't know where we're going? How we're we going to get? We'll there. know when we get there. We'll know when we get there because the Holy Ghost will tell us. That, that almost but, sounds like you ought to be in Congress. Well, we'll vote for it, and we'll, uh, we'll figure yeah, it out. I'll we'll promise it out. you what you want to know. We'll what what do you want to hear? We'll we'll get around to it. Uh, I used to have a round to it on the desk, and people say round to it. I say, Here's one. I flip it over to it. A little coin says round to it. And on the other side, is, this is a <laughs> round to it. <laughs> well, of course, we, we we pull our understanding of life and our worldview from the from the scripture, the Bible. Yes. And. Uh, when you start out and you look at the beginning in, in Genesis, that was what, the thing that they had. They had a intimate relationship. Adam was created, Eve was created, and God came and, and walked with them, it says, in the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. And we don't know how long that lasted. We don't know whether it was you know, weeks, years, it doesn't months. tell us. It doesn't tell us how long that lasted. But we knew it was a period of time. But there was, there was some period of time that, that Adam and Eve walked in that intimate relationship with God. They had a face-to-face -face relationship with, with God as he was manifest in that way. And uh, we, we know then from, from the scripture that this is what he was desirous of and is still desirous of. That relation, that that intimate re relationship, was broken, and uh, from that moment till now, uh, that is what God has been working to bring back. Yes, um, we we have the capability of it today through Jesus, through His uh, paying the, the price. It says, you know, that in Paul wrote to the to the. Uh, Thessalonians or Corinthians and said you know that uh, we we have uh, all of these different bodies and all these different things that are going on and, and all this working and and he's working in us to bring us back to that um, since the last you know we're talking about the of course our ministry the last Adam it says the first Adam was made a living soul the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Well, that yes. last Adam is, that it's talking about there is Jesus. And he, he made it available to us, but we have to appropriate it. Uh, Adam was given it. Mm -hmm. Adam walked in, in it from his creation until he lost it. And we come back then, we have to receive Christ. As we've said so many times on the program, we receive him as Savior. That's the first step because we realize, okay, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Uh, so I'm undone and I need help. And so uh, we, we accept him as Savior. That's the first step. Hopefully, real quickly to that, we make him Lord. Yes. And and part of that Lordship then is, is as we come... Uh, is coming into that more intimate relationship with him because when as we progress through our life experience uh, as we begin to see how again in the four gospels how jesus worked we see through the epistles how we're supposed to live and, and re relate to him uh, as, as paul was bringing it out to those that he was writing to uh, paul and peter and the, and the rest of them uh, we we have to step into that and work our way into it we have been given it again we have been given it in the spiritual realm when when we when we make that that step in, uh, 
this is an important point you're bringing up, and, yeah, and we need to do it to the point where anybody out there listening to us will understand what we're getting at. You just mentioned spirit man. That's absolutely true, mm -hmm. and we need we need to understand that we're a spirit being, but but the intimacy is not with your spirit being; it's with your soulish being, mm -hmm. initially. Now your spirit being isn't isn't eliminated from that. No, but the deciding factor is, is our solely the decisions we make with our our mind, our will, and our emotions, if you will. Yep. <laughs> uh, I, I like what you said. You jumped down to three, where I mentioned Adam and Eve ultimately had the first intimate relationship with God, mm -hmm. and they lost it. And they lost it. Uh, then we come along, and you mentioned, you know, we, uh, and you mentioned the solely side and Jesus the spiritual side which which we've taught on many times before if you don't understand that too uh, because the spirit side is not our problem it is not it's, if you're born again Christian your spirit is not your problem your soul where you're living is well, how you're living your life right now is the problem and and so Adam and Eve uh, they had it right and they blew it uh, and they blew it because there's an enemy out there that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And uh, because he's out there to kill, steal, and destroy, he started the first human that God made, which was Adam yeah. and Eve, because Eve was made from Adam. That's something people don't realize necessarily anymore, that <laughs> they're not two unique individuals created individually. Uh, one came from the other. Now the the one that they came from has come from through the other. So now it's flipped. Male man can't come here today without going through the female. But initially, a female through the male. I will understood him. But okay, glad you got that. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to get into some things here that that most people are are flat out totally ignorant. Because we wouldn't have a society so screwed up as 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 it is, based on societies of the world. And we'll get into more of that later, maybe. Uh, I, I go back college days, uh, eons ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. when I took a course on on comparative religion, and I'll throw it out there now. We may come back on it, may not. But in comparative religion, we talked about every culture and religion that was known to the world of any consequence back then. Now, I don't know whether new cultures have evolved since then or not, but because uh, I don't know that I believe in evol evolution, but <laughs> not the way you hear it on TV. Uh, but anyhow, all of this, uh, we have a connection to the other cultures in the world. Sure. And we understand what that relationship is. They may not. Now, I didn't mean to shut you off, but uh, you, you touched on some things there that are very important. And we need to get make sure they understand what we're talking about because uh, we are the three-part being, but we're dealing primarily with the side where our intimacy is. And I'll throw this out, and you already know it because we've said it before. Our first, our first step into intimacy with the Holy Ghost and with God is when we become born again. Mm -hmm. Now I'll throw it back to you, and you can pick up. Take all these pieces and make some sense of them. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, here again, um, it says there in First Corinthians, the fifteenth chapter, the first Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. We now, through the through the Holy Spirit, are brought back into the Adamic relationship mm -hmm. that that Adam had. We we actually um, we the the church world let's put it that way tends to say well we need to be like Jesus we do yes <laughs> but we are brought back into that Adamic nature mm -hmm. which was man created in perfection and given uh, the rights and privileges to this earth as God intended and that's what Jesus. Jesus didn't walk in divinity. Jesus walked in Adamic nature. Exactly. Now, now you people get that. When Jesus walked on the earth, he did as God. He walked as mankind under the, under the, uh, all the blessings and covenants that God had given Adam and Eve. Right. Right. And so, um, 
he then again, uh, of course, and Jesus said, said, you know, the things that I do, you can do, and and you'll do greater, greater things because from the day of Pentecost till today, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, and 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 it's it's dwelling in us in a little different way than what it was. Uh, God God's fellowship with Adam was in a face-to-face -face relationship. Right. Now, as you said, uh, we have gone through the time when, as Jesus said, uh, the, the Spirit has been coming upon you, but he's going to be in you. In you. And so now he, he's, he is within us, and so we have a, a different, better relationship. But, you know, that's why we have what we call the New Covenant. Mm -hmm. when, you read, when you read the book of Hebrews, it says, here is why we have a better covenant. Mm -hmm. We have a, a better relationship. We have again that opportunity to become into that intimate relationship, where um, we can once again walk with, fellowship with, and and enjoy the presence of God. That's important. It's really important. Now, <laughs> one big difference for us is that we never had it all dumped onto us right away like Adam did. That's right. We have to develop it. Uh, by our own will to build the most the uh, intimate relationship or even just even a relationship mm -hmm. you could go to the minor part of it I like what Hagen said one time God has two wills the perfect will and the permissive will most Christians live into the permissive will mm -hmm. you have your free will you can do make your mistakes and stuff but that's not God's way okay. uh, I lost track of where I was headed there <laughs> throw it back to you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> your, your mind's still moving, and my, I took a brief rest. <laughs> well, uh, here again, we now, uh, not only personally, but corporately, have to see a restoration. Exactly. As, as we go through from the fall through to, to Jesus and into the, uh, the final, the revelation and the final unfolding of of everything and out into uh, timeless eternity, uh, God began restoring again to what we call the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. Uh, we, we, we mix up who we are and, and who the building is uh, or what the building is so many times. Uh, but the, the believer today, as, as we went through... Uh, as we've gone through time, those that believed in in the coming of the Messiah, the, then believed in the Messiah, and then believe now uh, in the Holy Spirit, and from his from his you know from the day of Pentecost till now, we saw a resting of those things, so that we could get back to corporately and individually back to where we belong. Now we see. Um, we see what we call, you know, the body of Christ, the church, the, the called out ones. We see various levels in the corporate body of growth, as you were talking yes. before. Yes. Uh, we have people that have just come in and just made Jesus, uh, accepted Jesus as Savior, uh, beginning to make him Lord. Uh, and then we have others uh, been in a while. That, that have been in it a while. We had <laughs> uh, in, in the church service this morning, we had those of us that had been in it for 40 years, and we've had some that have been in it for just a couple years. I don't think it was anybody that there that was brand new, just brand new, um, and so we we have this diversity then of experience that as we move through our life, um, some some of the the body of Christ is ahead of the rest of the body of yes. Christ. Yes, you're always uh, going to have that, and and so. Um, one person's relationship and one person's level of relationship and intimacy is going actually they're all going to be different because of everybody's everybody each one of us is a unique being and yes. has, has had a unique yes. set of circumstances bringing us to that time and to that place that we're at now and each one of us um, God wants something different from us right and uh, we've said that for years <laughs> right uh, and, and here again uh, Paul, when he was writing to the Corinthians, said uh, in, in the 12th chapter, he said, now concerning these spiritual things, uh, I want you to understand, there's differences of administrations, there's differences of this, but it's the one and self-same spirit that's working with us. All of us. Uh, and 
uh, we uh, I believe we've come to a to a a place and 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 haven't yet reached the fullness and maturity of it but we've come to a place where we kind of understand that a little bit better than what we what we did maybe even 20 years ago yep. uh, to where we understand that you've got your place to play uh, I've got my place and and each one of again using scripture that the, the whole body fully framed together and compacted by that which every joint supplies and, and that's the intimacy of the body of Christ mm-hmm that puts me then in intimacy through through the spirit with the rest, rest of, the of the body. body. Exactly. And, and so you out there, if you're a brand new believer, you have a part to play in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You have become intimate with us, even though we don't even know who you are yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to throw this out because I really do much with the introduction. We're, we're, this is really a, a conversation uh, with us regarding uh, all of these topics that that help us as as born again believers to see what where we come from which we've mentioned uh, where we're at now and where we're headed now that's oversimplification but uh, you and I have shared on this program throughout the years God is a God of progressive revelation mm -hmm. and, and everybody has a part to play we're all unique that way and God has given everybody, even you out there, you may be late getting there, but you're there. Uh, now, there's some watching here that haven't got there yet. They will. By faith, they will become part of the body of Christ. But I lost my track again. <laughs> I keep myself on the foot now. Uh, well, move your foot. <laughs> so, to, your, so to speak. Take, take your finger off the trigger or move your foot. <laughs> well, basic, basically, uh, I guess what we're getting at is that... Uh, we're all growing at different rates. Everybody that's a born again Christian has started, and and one of the major steps in that starting is make Jesus Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, he's already Savior. You made Him Savior. That's the first step, Lord of your life. Now things will begin to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're when He's just Savior, you're going to be doing most of your living by your own free will. Mm -hmm. You you won't be that. Uh, caught up in spiritual things so quote unquote but when you Lord when he becomes Lord of your life and starts talking to you individually and he will because he has us and we had, we all went through this uh, Jerry isn't with us today because he's mystery to somebody else but uh, we've all gone through it and and we've all grown I'm not at the same level spiritually or soulish revelation as Kendall or Jerry that isn't here <laughs> uh, but we're in the body of Christ we have intimacy with each other because of the body of Christ and we're continuing to grow uh, we'll get into more of this as we go and we'll see how society plays a role in all of this because uh, our society is unique in the world based on what you look at societies and other cultures around the world and we will touch on some of that but uh, that's in one of my other topics here that we, I don't have these in a particular order so Okay. Uh, well, here again, the we're winding down on this one, I think. The corporate body of Christ is in a position of coming together. Yes. Um, we we hope to see it quickly. It's happening, uh, but it, maybe it, not as fast as right, we'd like it, to see it's it. It's not happening as as, as quickly in, in some areas as, as we'd like to see it, but um, we are being brought into the the base of the fullness of Christ. Uh, again, you know, we, we've talked many times here about the, the work of the fivefold ministry. Yes. The apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And that, it says the work of that of, of the ministry is to bring us into perfection mm -hmm. that we henceforth be no more children. Mm -hmm. So the idea is for, for us to grow up, to mature, mm -hmm. to walk in more, to, to be less... Um, needy of outside um, feeding well outside feeding <laughs> but out, outside uh, control you know, that too we, we, we need you know we need to be self control spirit controlled but we need to we need to not be immature uh, our level of intimacy um, 
is probably going to depend on our level of maturity. I would delay it this way. See if this is a young guy that's in junior high. He's got enough intelligence. He's moving along. There's this guy over here in college just working on a PhD degree. Now there's a big difference between these two guys, and that's I think alluding to what you were talking about. We're all come up to the point where we can stand alone in what we're doing and what God's called us to do, but we don't stand alone. We can draw on others in the body of Christ to help us keep growing and moving on. And this guy up here is studying for the doctoral degree. He hasn't arrived yet either. Mm -mm. <laughs> but he's into this, and I, I had this pointed out to me not too long ago by the Holy Ghost. I'm studying things now in the Word that I'd never studied when I was in the junior high level. Mm -hmm. uh, and he told me just the other day, this, this intimate thing that we're talking about, been talking about, he says, uh, he asked me a question, he said, are you ready, re are you ready to more uh, deeper relationship in intimacy? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to think so. Uh, but see, every individual, even everybody out there watching, you're on a level somewhere. If you're a born again Christian, you're on a level. And you're going to grow. But you're only going to grow as you desire to grow. If you don't desire to grow, you'll, you'll stay on this plateau until you start backsliding, and then you're in dangerous territory. We'll not go there right now unless Kendall wants to say something about that. Well, no, but I, I, I do want to bring in the maturity. Um, part, of the, part of the difference between the junior high and the college-age person or the um, experience ex college yeah. is, is is a level of maturity yes because we have seen things happen one of the things uh, in, in blacksmithing and, and, and in knife making uh, everybody says you don't want to buy the first knife <laughs> you know by, by his hundreds yeah um, and and I I tell everybody when that when you when I'm doing something in this you know uh, I say well the first hundred times are uh, Working the heart puzzle, I say generally the first thousand because I'm way past hundred on that. Uh, the first thousand times is the toughest, yeah. Because we de we develop a level of maturity because we have done it, uh, or we have done similar things which we can relate to <laughs> that. the The principles, the, the principles of the Word of God. When, once we get those principles down on the inside of us to know what it is and 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 to know the authority of the name of Jesus mm -hmm. uh, to know how to walk in in the leading of the spirit and listen to him in the way that he leads us because he leads each one of us differently that's right and, and uh, each each person is unique again in their ministry and so each person is unique in the way that he does it as you see Jesus walking through through the Gospels, uh, he, he heals people, but he hardly ever does it the same, same way. way. That's you know? right. Um, and and we have to we have to learn that, develop. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. It's not learn so much as it's develop. We need to develop that sensitivity. We we learn knowledge, but we develop uh, wisdom and, and maturity is developing, and and our uh, progression through the course of life. The next program, I want to bring that up and start there because there's something I want to add to that that we got from Jerry regarding what you're talking about right now. So copy the program. I don't know how you can copy it, but copy it. Uh, we used to say tape it, but I don't think we use tapes anymore. <laughs> That's old. That's old hat. Uh, I think there still are some out there, but. Yeah, well, uh, tune in again to Great and Mighty Things and we'll continue our conversation. Kendall and I are having this conversation for your benefit. And it blesses us, I'll guarantee you it blesses us, to be able to discuss these things that we've been through, that you can go through, and you will rise to a higher level spiritually and, and in your social life than you have before.